Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find RCE online at rce-cast.com. There's an RSS feed there, as well as a link to iTunes for your favorite podcatcher. Uh, I have again Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and Open MPI. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Hey, Brock. How's it going? All right. So we also have off the website a link to your blog, and you've actually answered some of the questions I've had recently, being an MPI noob myself. Uh, and <laughs> thank you very much for that. And I see it actually sparked a little bit of discussion with some of those questions. I think that was good. And, it's and all good. For people. Yeah, yeah. Love no, to answer these kinds of questions. MPI can be uh, quite the mysterious beast. Yep. Yeah, and so uh, you can also find all of our Twitter handles and usual contact information on there, as well as a list of all of our back shows and things that we're looking at getting a hold of. If you have contact information for any of the shows we haven't done yet that's on that list, please let us know on the contact form. Uh, and today t- is kind of, uh, we've been going down a little bit of a path, right? We, we uh, talked about Hadoop a while ago, and Hadoop has come up more recently, and uh, today's show is kind of related to that, right? So yeah, when I was I keep finding these different pieces of software, um, Lucene, Hadoop, Nutch, and Solar, uh, they're all kind of related, and they all live out at Apache.org. And they're all Java-based, but they're also all designed to scale at very large scales. Um, when we had uh, Cloudera on earlier talking about Hadoop, you're talking about massive, you know, multi-petabyte clusters, and I'm sure those have only grown since then. So I think yeah, there was something it, coming on. You know- the definition of HPC is just kind of changing, and this is kind of a contentious topic. You know, it's it's not just the same traditional HPC that we've we've seen. You know, there's a lot of big data number crunching going on uh, that you know loosely could be considered HPC. It takes a lot of compute, a lot of scale, a lot of processors, disk, memory, all that stuff. You know, as a matter of fact, in Open MPI, we're just going to be adding Java MPI bindings uh, to our development trunk in the in the near future, and the reason for it. Um, is because the Hadoop guys have become interested in using MPI as an IPC channel. You know, they're in the in the MapReduce world, their reduces are becoming so computationally complex that they want to go parallel and they need a, a good IPC mechanism for it. So, you know, some of these things are starting to have very interesting overlap. So what you didn't traditionally consider as HPC, you know, it, it's starting to get in there. And I, I think today's project kind of fits in that same category. Yeah, anything bigger than what you can do in a normal, traditional programming and um, server environment. Got to start doing these things at these massive scales. Yeah, so let's go ahead and introduce our guest today. Yeah, so our guest today is Simon Wilnauer. Um, I believe he's over in the UK, and he's one of the people involved with Lucene. So, Simon, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Hey, guys. Um, good to talk to you. Um, thanks for giving this short introduction. Um, <clears throat> my name is Simon, and I'm a uh, Apache Lucene committer, and I also happen to be the Lucene PMC chair, which is kind of an official position. Um, I've been working with Lucene since 2005, and I'm a committer since 2006, and I spend a whole bunch of time uh, on working on this project, um, pushing it forward, um, you know, spreading the word. And um, in my day-to-day job, I I work like 50% on uh, Apache Lucene specific stuff and uh, the other 50% I usually spend on customer projects. Um, I uh, share um, a company with a couple of other people. It's called Search Workings. Um, this is also related to searchworkings.org. It's a community portal about Lucene, Solar, and all this open source uh, search stuff. And I run a conference in Berlin. It's called Berlin Buzzwords. It happens annually, and um, this year it's in June. So what, can you give us a rundown on what Lucene is exactly? Well, Lucene is basically, in a contrast to all the other things I've seen on your podcast, it's, it's just a library. Right, so it's it doesn't do anything. It's not an application. You can't start it up. It's just basically a Java library um, which solves the hard problems in information retrieval, the basic information retrieval, like building an index, uh, retrieving documents, and not analyzing text, um, and making everything in there are uh, very very efficient. So it's basically a high performance search engine library entirely written in Java. So does that mean you entail indexing as well? So, I mean, you mentioned accessing documents and searching. So, assumedly, there's there's a bit more to it than that, right? 
Right. So um, in, in Lucene, we have uh, we have a notion of a document, which is which basically corresponds to some kind of an entity. Um, but everything is uh, somewhat schema-less, so you don't have to uh, really define the different entities. You can just throw it in and it works. And each document has uh, a set of fields. Um, the, you, can, you can just imagine it as a spreadsheet, a database with one table. Right? And uh, Lucene takes care of building up this table and making this table accessible. So the point of this is is to be able to search it really fast, right? So uh, do you build a, a separate index for this? I mean, how I actually know very little about search, embarrassingly little about search. Um, so how does you know a typical search work, and and how do you make it fast? Well, in, in a contrast to a database um, in in Lucene or in an in a information retrieval library, you have something called a reverse index or an inverted index. So you basically um, index the, the terms, the unique terms in a document, and then map those terms to the documents where the term occurs in. And everything you do is when you type a query is you get a list of documents those terms occur in. Um, and um, how we make this fast? Well, there's a couple of things uh, we do uh, on a technical level, but um, basically, I mean, where should I start? Um, what, what we do is we, every data structure we've seen is read-only, right? And we have some, um, some standard um, algorithms in place which writes stuff to disk, makes it, uh, makes it persistent, and then people can, can load these uh, indexes and um, fire their searches against it. And, um, you know, once you have updates, you write a new little index to disk and then you merge it in the background together and everything is basically read-only. You don't change anything. All the data structures are highly efficient. Um, you, we make efficient use of, um, of the infrastructure, file system caches and all these kind of things. Um, in contrast to, to a SQL database or something like that, you don't need to do update everything, right? You don't need to update anything in place, not on disk. Um, that, I think, makes a big difference. And um, Lucene is a library which is very, very much tailored to the purpose of um, full-text search. Once you do something else with it, you could easily get into problems. But we can elaborate on this later. So Lucene would not be good for kind of replacing a traditional database if your information is changing rapidly? Well, it, that's that's basically two questions. Um, one is the data is changing rapidly. The other one is uh, can you replace a traditional database with it? The, the the answer to the second question is you can, but you have to denormalize your data model, right? You only have one table. You have to put everything in one table. You can't do more than one. There is some developments which implement joins um, based on Lucene. Um, but they're, they're, they have a lot of limitations. This not, they don't have the power of uh, a SQL store. Um, when, you, when documents update rapidly, um, Lucene still works. We have something called a near real-time search, um, but it works slightly different, and it involves um, more disk I.O., and it's, it's basically less efficient space-wise because in Lucene, you don't have an update procedure. You only have a delete and an add. So basically, if you want to update a document, you delete all or mark all previous documents with the same key as deleted, and then add the new one on top. So it sounds like, like you know, it doesn't have all the features of a full database. Things like MySQL and Postgres SQL and these other databases where we've traditionally stored a lot of data have full text search and par table partitioning and you know the MySQL MBD cluster. Why would I want to use Lucene over one of these traditional systems? Well, the the first problem is um, how is this full text search implemented? I'm I'm not sure about every every implementation, um, but full text search is more more is more than um, than just putting something into a database and start indexing it, right? You could have a whole bunch of analysis in front of it. Like you wanna you wanna remove die critics, you wanna tokenize your text. Um, you want to put synonyms in, uh, remove stop words, do stamming, all these information retrieval related things, um, put some machine learning in front of it. Um, Lucene supports all these kind of things. And it is actually um, made for, for uh, full text-ish full text queries. 
just go one step further and say you have some positional information, like term A occurs next to term B. How would you do this in a NoSQL, uh, in, a, in a MySQL environment, right? You don't have those notions. Um, and um, the basic reason is those databases were not made for information retrieval. So let me take a step back here. Why, why is text search important? What kind of fields is this used in? What kind of applications? I mean, obviously, the, the, the most obvious thing I can think of is, you know, you go to Google and you get like the uh, quick search and things like that. But what other areas is this uh, useful in? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, if you go to Google and type a web search, and you definitely at some point hit an inverted index. Um, um, there's much more about that in Google. There's a lot of ranking stuff going on. Lucina's ranking too. We can get to this later. Um, there's a whole lot of applications, um, starting from your little mobile phone running Android. Um, there, there, you could implement some kind of uh, on-device search. Um, searching your little emails, um, go on your operating system, you want to index your file system, um, find things quickly. Um, you have a web shop and you want to find um, you know, things, things you sell, um, but you, you don't want to rely on the database, which only gives you exact matches. You want to have stuff like spell checking and query suggestions and all these kind of, kind of neat features, um, which uh, Lucene can give you, like faceting. Um, but you can even further and say, hey, you have, a, you have an application related to geographic information and you want to find something within a certain geolocation, bounding box searches. This is where Lucene can help a lot. Um, yeah, all kinds, of, all kinds of information. Basically, every website has a, has a, um, a search engine behind it. Um, like, there's a lot of content management systems integrating Lucene and Solar. Um, yeah, there's almost no application these days without a search box, right? Okay, that makes perfect sense. So uh, how did this get started at Apache? And, and what's the relationship with uh, Lucene and Hadoop and Solar and others? Well, let's talk a little bit about the history. Um, I think in 1999, well, wow, that's a long time ago for computer science, right? Um, 1999, Duck Cutting came up with um, a little pet project. I think it was his first Java project. Um, he wrote a search engine, I call it Lucene, and um, a couple of years later, he he donated the code for Lucene to the Apache Foundation, which is version 1.4. If I call, recall correctly, that was in 2001. So the scene turned 10 last year. And, um, well, what happened is that uh, this library is uh, further developed and uh, gained a lot of traction. A lot of people um, invested in it. A lot of um, also famous people or well-known people in the Java community contributed stuff to the scene. But at some point, um, the, the problems you want, we wanted to solve in Lucene became bigger. Um, like, you know, you want to index the web. Uh, a little library doesn't help you really, right? Do you need to write so much code on top of this? Like, you need a crawler, you need a database where you store the link information in, et cetera, et cetera. And somebody came up with the idea of Nutch. Um, and Nutch was built as a um, web scale crawling search engine, um, which should be capable of indexing tons and tons and tons of data, uh, basically in the entire web. Um, well, using Lucene for this um, worked pretty well, but you had to deal with all the, the distribution between machines, uh, and you also had to deal with storing the, the websites and the link information and run, run um, algorithms on it like MapReduce um, or PageRank algorithms. Uh, MapReduce came later. Um, and out of this, um, when Google published the papers about uh, HDFS, um, GFS and um, MapReduce, Duck Cutting founded uh, yet another project as a sub-project of Lucene called Hadoop. And um, Basically, out of this, um, it became another top-level project. Nudge became a top-level project, and Lucene was left alone with this task for information retrieval. So those are the relations between those projects. 
So then is does Lucene require Hadoop to actually use? Like, is it a library that assumes MapReduce functionality is available? No. Um, Lucene is actually one of the projects in the Apache Foundation which, ha- which has zero dependencies. So the core of Lucene doesn't need anything to run except of a Java runtime environment. Um, yeah, there's a couple of modules we have that need third-party libraries, but the relationship is the other way around. So if you want to do some kind of indexing things, you prob- and you're using Hadoop, you have enough data where it makes sense, uh, you probably want to use Lucene to actually build your indexes. Uh, another question, kind of going back a little bit here, does Lucene only index text or does it index other things as well? I mean, you mentioned documents, but can those documents contain things other than text? Yes and no. <laughs> Let me elaborate here. Um, so the latest version of Lucene uh, is somewhat bound to text. So it, uh, it basically accepts a string for, uh, for a value um, for a, a document consists of out of one or more fields and each field can have a value. And those values are strings. But in the current trunk development, we moved from strings to bytes. Um, and we index those bytes. So basically, if you, if you can, you know, materialize your data to bytes and you can make some kind of sense out of this, uh, then you can index it with Lucene. So once I've done that, how hard is it to make a, an index environment that's aware of, say, my collection of genomes or my collection of images? That's an interesting question. Um, it's to begin with, Lucene is probably not the right tool to search your genome database. Um, I'm not sure. There's a lot of people came up with crazy ideas, like you know, um, some somebody uh, came up lately, and we were talking about to build a chess computer based on Lucene, right? You what you basically would do is index all the 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 chess games um, published in a in a in a in a big chess database and then make good predictions out of this um, but you know everything you need to do is you need to you need to transform uh, your genome representation into bytes and if you if your application needs to do something like you know give me all ge- give me all genome strings starting with this string or or a similar to this string within a certain distance um, then that would be probably straightforward. But, um, well, with Lucene 4, um, I, I would say if you, if you break out of the, of the common model of a full text search, uh, it probably involves way more work than, um, than a, a classical application. But it could do it. So... The the major purpose for moving to bytes is actually um, a different one. So um, I, I can elaborate on this if you want, but um, to answer your question, it's 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 way harder than just doing um, a normal full text search engine. So then, on a on a related question here, does Lucene do other languages? Uh, well, languages other than English. Um, things that are multi-byte representations of characters and do the same, you know, uh, phonetic and search types of contexts span languages? Yes. So uh, basically, internally to Lucene, everything is UDF-8 bytes, right? So we represent everything uh, in UDF-8. We moved out of the Java model. Um, Java basically uses uh, two byte for a character um, or for a code point. And um, we moved down to UDF-8 representation because it can save us a lot of space on disk and in memory. Um, but yeah, you can you can basically search everything um, which you can represent as, as UDF8. You can also use some Unicode compression um, if you you know if you search some um, Asian scripts. Um, you can certainly go and say use some Boku encoding um, to to save space. The question if you can search another language, um, 
it doesn't really relate to how Lucene is implemented internally. Lucene offers a ton of language analysis tools for, I don't know, I've never counted, but when I look at the source, it's probably like 50 to 60 different languages from, from Hindi to Polish, Japanese, English, yeah, Brazilian, Portuguese. It's all there. Some, some of them are better, some of them are uh, worse, but um, you can basically write your own if, you're not, if your language is not supported. It's all possible to see. So you keep mentioning this is all written in Java. What was the rationale behind using Java for such a system? I think I mentioned this before. It was Duck Cutting's first project in Java, and it just it just you know it was just meant to be a little pet project um, that it took off in a way it did. I think it was never planned uh, in a way, but. Um, you know, somebody could argue you could do the language like C++, where you have more freedom with memory here and there. You probably get more um, more performance out of it. I say probably. I'm not sure if that's true. You can actually write really efficient code in Java. Um, sometimes it, it requires evil tricks to get there. And usually... Every every time you use Java, you're gonna you're gonna fight with garbage collection and the uh, cheat compilers. They mostly do the right thing. Sometimes they don't, and you wonder why. But yeah, there's there wasn't like a real decision. Um, hey, we write a search engine and let's write it in Java. It just happened by accident. Yeah, I feel your pain there. You know, whenever you're writing optimized code, you know, a lot of <laughs> rules can go out the window, unfortunately, uh, to to extract really high performance. But it, Java has also come quite a long way since 1999. The, the compilers have gotten better and the JITs have gotten better uh, and the performance has gotten quite a bit better. It's still an interpreted language, but, you know, there are a lot of enterprise class applications that depend on speed and optimization that, that run in Java today. But by the same token, with all that as kind of a prelude to my question here, um, do you have some parts of it that are not written in Java? Like, I, I know very little about Java, to be honest. But I know that some applications will actually kind of branch out into C for their optimized parts. Actually, we don't, um, which is not entirely true. Um, nothing, nothing is written in C, which is actually, I know of the people use it in production. We have um, a couple of um, implementations of our lowest level file system representation um, for a couple of reasons. Like Lucene does a lot of I.O., especially when it merges indexes in the background. And um, when you when you write in write um, to an I.O. stream or to a channel in Java, you basically always hit the file system cache, right? You invalidate your cache. Um, and there's a couple of implementations which try to work around this and do like direct writes and um, uh, or do write throughs and t- Talk to actually the, the 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 operating system, the tell the operating system, hey, I'm gonna read this sequentially, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Stuff like stuff like um, I/O operations, you don't have access to when you're in Java. But um, to be honest, our benchmarks show that the implementations are not faster than the Java stuff. The problem with um, calling into a native interface in Java is that the native interface call is pretty costly. So if you have a piece of code, which is pretty hard, or a method is called very, very often, you should rather rely on a JIT compiler to, to go compile this into native code and keep it around than trying to work around this and use the Java native interface. That's my opinion. So what is Lucene's query model? Like, what's the, what's it look like when I'm passing something into Lucene? Does it, is it it kind of munged into a SQL kind of thing, or is it completely its own deal? No, it's 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 completely different. It doesn't do any SQL kind of thing. Um, well, the most of, most applications, I would say, they just pass in a user typed query. It's like I don't know, you type you type, type some words you want to find. Let's say David Bowie, right? And um, Lucene internally runs uh, a query parser on it. It understands a couple of um, Boolean parameters and or not. Um, and it has a couple of things like range, um, a range syntax. You can you can search 
um, numeric ranges or text ranges, date ranges. You can do wildcard queries and prefix queries, um, phrases, and fuzzy queries. But um, you know that 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 syntax is uh, is only bound to the Lucene standard query parser, and there is like five or six of them around, which have totally different syntax. It all boils down to the API and the kind of queries you can instantiate. And I would say the, a lot of people really do this, build their own query parsers, come up with their own syntax. Um, depending on what they really need. And this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest advantages in Lucene is it gives you the freedom to do it. You're not bound to anything um, syntax-wise. Well, I think you just hit a first there in uh, RCE history. I think that's the first time we've ever mentioned David Bowie on one of our podcasts. Uh, Oh, awesome. I, I just read something about Lucene and somebody had a problem on, on Stack Overflow with uh, ranking David Bowie against some other David. And that's why I came up with it. <laughs> hey, you know, great real world examples. This is all good. All right. Uh, my next question is uh, what kind of back end storage do you use? I mean, you mentioned, uh, you know, native file system stuff. You mentioned one big table like interface. Uh, what is it? Is it an actual database, a customized kind of database or what do you, what do, you do? Well, Lucene writes its data structures itself, so there's no database behind it. All the all the low-level code is uh, is contained in the core jar. Um, the the actual persistent storage or volatile storage, whatever you want to use, is hidden behind um, an abstraction, what we call a directory. And you can build directory f- which operates exclusively on um, on heap space, um, or you want to do some memory mapping, or you want to use Java's NIO classes. But it basically boils down to either a file system or some kind of other uh, volatile storage. Uh, there's a couple of people tried to build directories for Cassandra and other NoSQL storage um, well, solutions that, in my, from what I can tell, doesn't work that well or doesn't scale that well. But usually it boils down to uh, you go to the file system. Your basic thing is your hard disk. And, and then all the data structures are written on top of this. Does this answer your question? Yeah, it does. Let me ask actually a further one. What happens if I use uh, what's becoming popular these days, cloud-based storage, right? If I've got a whole chunk of data and I'm a small startup um, and I host it out on you know, Amazon's cloud storage or, or Google, Google's cloud storage or something like that, how does Lucene react to that? Is this an I.O. intensive and so the latency would, would kill me or is it more tolerant of that? How does that go? Well, um, that really depends. Um, for the indexing side of things, it can be extremely I/O bound. Um, for the for the read part, for searching, it depends on what kind of um, file system implementation you use, what kind of directory. Um, I would probably recommend to use memory mapping, so it basically pushes everything to memory, so you don't suffer from really slow disks. Um, but in general, Lucene is not doesn't contain any any code for distribution. It's 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 meant to be on a single box. If you want to do this in a distributed mode and you have like massive amount of data uh, or or a super large amount of documents, you probably use something on top like Solar or Elasticsearch or Kata, some frameworks on top of this. So can you go into that a little bit more? What exactly do these other frameworks that I assume are built on Lucene, like you mentioned Solar, which is the one that keeps coming up, what do they do to really make this scale to a massive level? So, Solar is basically a full-fledged application. You download it, you put it in a Surflet container, you start it up, and uh, put some documents in via REST interface, and then just search. Right? Um, And it uses Lucene under the hood, so it's basically built on top. It's the Lucene's official search server. There's other projects like Elasticsearch, which uh, focus on real time search and, um, you know, document replication, large scalability, and sharding. Um, Solar adds these features too in in, in version 4, which is the upcoming version. Um, But 
yeah, basically, it it gives you everything Lucene doesn't offer out of the box. It puts the it it integrates the API uh, into uh, an, an executable application. That's the major difference between it. So, what what are the resources for actually running one of these things? Um, does it scale with the number of documents, or how many documents you're indexing today? What's what's the hardware to make this go? Oh, well. So I, I personally have experience with uh, running Lucene on um, very, very low-power mobile phones, which works, right? Um, you're certainly not going to index millions of documents on this. Um, well, unless your battery runs out. But um, the hardware requirements are not really the issue here. It always depends on you know how much data you have, how fast you want to deliver your search results, and what kind of searches you're executing. There is uh, some kind of searches are very very computational intensive. Uh, some of them, some of the operations like indexing is very very I/O bound. But um, you know, um, when you have a, let's take an example. Let's say you have something around 20 to 25 million documents, all of the size of, let's say, a Wikipedia page, which is roughly like four kilobytes of text. Um, and you want to you want to serve those um, this data in in a very nice speed. Um, let's say you know normal queries like term queries or boolean queries coming back in something between five and twenty milliseconds, um, scaling with the number of requests. You probably use some some hardware like uh, you know two um, twelve CPUs, two times six cores. Um, you probably need something around eight to twelve gigs of, of RAM. Um, your hard disk is not super, super important, but SSDs usually give you a better performance here too. So do you cache much in memory for subsequent queries? So, because, I mean, you mentioned a pretty low amount of, of RAM there, actually, you know, only one gig per core or so, or even less. Right. Well, we absolutely rely on the file system cache. Right, we don't try to cache a lot of stuff in the Java heap space. Um, for the actual reverse index, um, there is some data structures held in memory, um, but those data structures are a tiny fraction of the actual size of the index. Um, so we basically rely on the fact that the file system keeps hot pages in memory as long as memory is available. So you don't necessarily need tons and tons of memory to make this run really, really smoothly. But if your index starts to grow, right, your file system cache needs to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, basically, yeah, you can run this on a very, very restricted environment and still have reasonable reasonable response times. Um, if, you, if you go much bigger, I, I use the term bigger here because I can't just say more documents or bigger documents. It really depends um, what kind of stuff you do. And if you store the entire document or you only use it for indexing and then retrieve the IDs, things like that. Um, yeah, you can you can do this kind of stuff with almost every requirement, every environment. You could run it on your notebook and probably, you know, for a web shop, nobody would really see much of a difference to a big machine. So where does uh, Hadoop in, come into this whole thing? I mean, Hadoop's this big, clustered, massive scale-out thing. Uh, how's how's Lucene play with that? Huh. That's a that's a tough question um, to answer in a couple of seconds. So uh, let me give you an example. Um, a lot of people have lots and lots of data. And um, to get all this data and index this data, um, they usually fetch it from a database. But let's say you have so much data, you have to put it on a on a on a file system like Hadoop, where you need to process uh, tons and tons of data. Um, you probably want to build your indexes on the fly in the process of a MapReduce job, and. Um, Basically, when you do this with Lucene, there's nothing special about it. You probably have a couple of reducers in Hadoop, which receive text, and out of this text, you're gonna um, you're gonna build a Lucene index on on a reducer. Um, and once this is done, you copy the whole index to HDFS, 
and your search engine fetches the new index from HDFS. So Hadoop can be used to lose to to build Lucene indexes, but it doesn't have like a real relation. There's nothing where you say, "Hey, here's the component you use, then it works with Lucene." There's um, a framework called Kata, or it's actually an application um, that uses Hadoop and Lucene or Hadoop underneath and Lucene on top do all the searching, index building and um, um, use Hadoop as a persistent storage. But there's not this close relation anymore. Would a setup like that let you scale Lucene from, you mentioned, you know, a couple million documents on a machine with 12 gigs of RAM and 12 cores to, say, you know, 100x that, you know, get into the billions? <laughs> It also depends. Um, you can. I, I've seen indexes with um, 200 million documents with small documents, and I've seen indexes with a couple of million documents where each document is massive, right? Um, something around like five megabytes of text per document. It always depends on what kind of stuff you index, but usually as a rule of thumb, 100 million documents is probably the limit for a single box. So one interesting thing is the Google book scanning project. Um, U of M's involved with that. And last time I talked to the guys involved with that, they were using Solar. Interesting. I think I've So heard I'm guessing of... that's Lucene underneath. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you, can, you can scale Lucene to, to a super large amount. It always depends on the distributed system you build on top. Lucene itself doesn't do any distribution, is not related to, you know, it doesn't have an RPC implementation, it doesn't talk to sockets or anything like that. It's completely agnostic. Um, you put something on top like Solar where you have replication and um, sharding and distributed search and all these kind of things, or Elasticsearch, the same kind of thing, then you can scale out massively, Absolutely. So, speaking of large indexes, what's the largest index that you've you've heard of that somebody's doing with Lucene? The number of documents, or the know, size however of you want to qualify it. <laughs> huh? I've seen a couple of people they're hitting actually the limits of a single index. So, just uh, for instance, we have a limit of. Um, 2.14 billion unique terms per per segment in the index, and there's a couple of people actually hitting these limits. When I say unique terms, right? So imagine how many unique words you need to have to hit the 2.14 billion border. This is a massive index. Cool. Um, in in terms of in terms of um, size, it really depends. Um, on average, or not on average, but um, a common compression ratio is thirty percent of your original text um, when you build the index. If you don't store the source data into Luc- in Lucene, you can do that too. <sighs> you know, this I've I've seen lots of indexes being more than five hundred gigabytes. Per machine, it really depends on what kind of documents, how many documents. So you can index 200 million documents and you end up with 25 gigabytes. But you can index 2.5 million documents and you're going to end up with 250 gigabytes of the index size. So it really depends. But it scales out that way. So what's coming for the future in Lucene? Um, the current version of Lucene is Lucene 3.5, and we've been working on Lucene 4 since basically 2009. Um, and Lucene 4 is uh, almost, I would say, almost a rewrite of Lucene. We changed tons of internal APIs. Um, we made uh, great improvements on the indexing side. There's like 300% interest rate improvements on indexing. Um, fuzzy Surge is 20,000% faster than 3.x um, searches can do. Um, there's tons and tons of new features regarding um, different scoring models. We, we support language models and um, 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 BM25 scoring all those kind of things um, researchers would like to use. Um, there's 
a massive amount of performance improvements. Um, and Solar comes with uh, new cloud features, like, you know, it manages its instances um, automatically and uh, shards uh, can join and leave and if machines go down, it starts up new machines, that's replication. Um, so, yeah, this is, it's going to be great. Um, there's a lot of improvements coming up and we hope that we can release it within the next six months. Okay, Simon, well, thank you very much for your time, and we'll have this show out soon. Again, you can find us online at rce-cast.com. Thanks again, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Thank you.